Hello, my freaky darlings. Welcome back. This week, we're heading to Mexico City and having a look at serial killer Juana Barraza, also known as the Little Old Lady Killer. Juana was born in Hidalgo, a rural area north of Mexico City. Her mother, Justa Samperio, was an alcoholic prostitute who reportedly pimped her out when she was 12 to a guy called Jose Luga for three beers. Jose repeatedly raped her over a period of four years and got her pregnant twice. First when she was 13 and again when she was 16. Apparently both pregnancies ended in miscarriage. But she eventually did have four children. Her eldest son died when he was 24 in a gang shooting. When her mother died of cirrhosis, Juana moved to Mexico City where she became a professional wrestler. Under the ring name of La Dama del Silencio, the Lady of Silence. She also spent the late 90s committing petty theft and then migrated to killing little old ladies. All of Juana's victims were women aged 60 or over. Many of them lived alone and she bludgeoned or strangled them before robbing them. Yeah. Bernardo Batiz, the chief prosecutor of me in Mexico City, initially profiled the killer as having a brilliant mind, being quite clever and careful, and suggested that the killer probably struck after gaining the trust of the intended victim. Investigating officers suspected that the killer posed as a government official, offering victims the chance to sign up for welfare programs. The search for, one, for Juana was complicated by conflicting evidence. At one point, the police thought there might be two killers involved. An odd coincidence also distracted the investigation. At least three of her victims owned a print of an 18th century painting by French artist Jean-Baptiste Griot. Boy in a red waistcoat. By November 2005, the Mexican authorities were reporting witness statements to the effect that the killer wore women's clothing to gain access to the victim's apartments. In one case, a large woman in a red blouse was seen leaving the home of a murdered woman. The cops, believing that the killer could be a transvestite, went on a rampage arresting all the trans prostitutes. But none of their fingerprints matched those found at any of the murder scenes. So they had to let all the poor innocent trans people go. Two months later, after an extended gap in the killings, police began checking the fingerprints of bodies in the city's morgues in the apparent belief or hope that the killer might have committed suicide. A major breakthrough in the case occurred on the 25th of January 2006 when a suspect was arrested fleeing the home of Ana Maria de los Reyes Alfaro, who lived in the Venustiano Carranza borough of Mexico City. Ana Maria was 82 and had been strangled with a stethoscope. To the surprise of many Mexicans who thought the killer was male, the suspect detained was Juana, and who is indeed female. The authorities believed that Juana was a psychopath who felt no remorse. She also associated her elderly victims with her mother and believed that she was helping society by killing them. That's ageist. Anyway, in order to gain the trust of her victims, she posed as a government official who worked in social welfare. So that part of the police profile was spot on. Juana was tried in the spring of 2008, the prosecution alleging she had been responsible for as many as 40 deaths. Mexico City prosecutors said fingerprint evidence linked Juana to at least 10 murders of the 40 murders attributed to her. She admitted to one murder, then of Alfaro, and told the police her motive was lingering resentment regarding her own mother's treatment of her. She told reporters she had visited Alfaro's home in search of laundry work. On the 31st of March 2008, she was found guilty on 16 charges of murder and aggravated burglary, including 11 separate counts of murder. She was sentenced to 759 years in prison. Since sentences imposed in Mexico, Mexican courts are generally served concurrently, the maximum sentence under Mexican law is 60 years, which means she'll possibly be paroled in 2058 
when she's a hundred years old. No, this kind of makes me wonder, why sentence her to 759 years? Why not just say life? Anyway, you know, I'm not a legal expert or you know, anything like that, but it just seems a bit odd. Or is that just me? Well, anyway, that's it for this week. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and share it with people who also who are also fascinated by weird shit like serial killers, ghosts, urban legends and things that go bump in the night. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay safe, stay healthy and if you're a little old lady, be careful who you let into your home because that masculine looking nurse might not be a friendly trans dude but a murdering wrestler. You know.